teams now and there you can see Ramses uh, he's going to be rocking that Sun team that a lot of players have uh, latched mm. onto with that Groudon as the restricted Pokemon and he's got quite a few uh, accomplishments as well he was able to go and uh, essentially get he wasn't able to become a, a champion at any of these qualifying events but he was able to just go ahead and um, uh, qualify through uh, coming second essentially in the second qualifier whilst he's also taken part in uh, victory roads previous event the Serquito Galar uh, where he was able to actually get top four and top eight um, between these tournaments these tournaments were had a lot of people they had I think even one of them had over a thousand 300 people even the most gathered amount of uh entries in a tournament so he's done very well for himself in the past couple of years he's also in real life uh been a champion of three mid-season showdowns so he's got a quite a bit of experience and good form going into this match versus yosuke yeah definitely so we're going to be having a look at yosuke's team now and it's going to be the only representative from Japan here, and it's going to be rocking the Kyogre as the restricted Pokemon. So it's going to be Kyogre versus Groudon immediately here as well. Yeah. And, and Yosuke was actually able to win one of the qualifiers, the third qualifier for the Victory Road circuit, as well as getting top 16 in the first one. So being able to come in here as second seed. Uh, so uh, really good showing uh, in the previous qualifiers and looking forward to see what they can do in this, in this top 16 for the grand finale, as they are rocking the double weather there with Kyogre as well as the Torkoal, uh, pairing that people probably wouldn't have expected to be uh, as common as it does seem to be, but Torkoal and Kyogre mm -hmm. seem to match pretty well against each other, even though they have counteracting weathers, so it's going to be definitely interesting to see this weather war, uh, weather versus double weather war. Yeah, uh, I mean, and you can't go wrong. You've got some very popular uh, combinations there. The synergy between uh, the Tornoga, the Venu Cole uh, synergies coming quite well together, as we are going to be going in straight to team preview, and um... How are we feeling about the matchup right now? Because we do have Ramses uh, rocking the Grim Snarl and Umbreon, which is actually very interesting. Uh, whilst the Yosuke does have that uh, dual mode weather going for their side of the field. Yeah, the Grimstar and Umbreon being very disruptive Pokemon. Grimstar classically setting up the, the screens and the light screen and the reflect, and Umbreon just wanting to, to spread those yawns around and maybe some snarls to, to disrupt the, the damage outputs. Uh, but then mm -hmm. there is also the the, the d dual speed control of the Tailwind potential from the Tornadus and the Trick Room from the Porygon 2 as well. Mm. And it's because there is the two weathers on your skate side of the field, you have to account for both of them. And if you, if you account for just one and get it wrong, uh, then it's going to be quite awkward to come back from that. But then you do have that Thunderous uh, that is very good against Kyogre and also very good against Venusaur that makes use of the Drought as well. So Thunderous could be a key Pokemon here going in against the, the dual weather. But then... Then Yosuke's got that extra speed control that Ramses doesn't seem to have as much. There's some airstreams that could come out from the Charizard and the Thunderous as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But Yosuke will have the, have the choice of speed control with the Tornadus and the Paragon 2 here. So we're going to have to see uh, whether Ramses how Ramses tries to disrupt with that Grimstar or Umbreon, or mm -hmm. how USK is going to be going for the speed controls with the Paragon 2 and the Tornadus. And also something to note as well, ladies and gents, the fact that this is a open team sheet event from this top 16 stage going onwards to the uh, penultimate um, finals of tomorrow. So they will be aware of each other's sets, of course, and the HP actually, but none of the other stats. As we are going to be seeing Yosuke lead with Porygon to Venusaur, and Ramses is going to be going with the Grimmsnarl and Umbreon on their side of the field. Yeah, so quite a classic lead coming out from Yosuke. You've seen Venusaur, Porygon 2, threatening the Sleep Powders and the Trick Room immediately. But we did say about the disruption coming out from Ramses' side, and he's opted for both of them straight away, the Grimmsnarl and the Umbreon. So the Grimmsnarl could be setting up any of those screens if it has access to them, and the Umbreon mm -hmm. could be spreading those Snarls to reduce the special attack of both the Porygon 2 and the Venusaur, as well as maybe having access to the Yawn to be able to put uh, any of the Pokemon to sleep on the next turn. So we're going to have to see what kind of disruption Ramses wants to go for, whether the Venusaur goes on the offensive immediately to try and set up some of those vine lashes or increase its special attack with if it has a max mm -hmm. move but it doesn't look like we're having any dynamax this term no dynamax we're just going to be seeing the tour come out from the grim Snarl into the venusaur to stop it from getting any cheeky sleep powder but no it's actually opted for sludge bomb into the grim Snarl, nearly picking up the ko as the umbreon actually goes for the yawn into the venusaur slot and an ice beam from the porygon 2 goes in 
into the Umbreon slot as well, but doesn't deal as much damage whilst also revealing the leftovers on the Umbreon. So a lot of damage with that Slug Bomb, though. A lot of damage. Not falling for the Taunt at all, not going for any Sleep Powders. So getting a lot of damage onto this Grim Snarl. It will be in range of any attack that Yosuke would want to go for in the future. If that would have been that Ice Beam into the, the Grim Snarl, it would have probably picked up the KO at that point, but not really doing too much damage into the Umbreon. And now the Venusaur has been yawned. It will have to switch out if it doesn't want to fall asleep, uh, which your Pokemon never really want to do, but then you lose a lot of damage potential on this turn. But it looks like Yosuke is preserving that Venusaur. Ooh, Yosuke actually opts to bring the Tortle in now instead, whilst bringing the Sun with it, thanks to its Drought ability. As um, the Porygon too actually switches out as well. A double switch from Yosuke's side. Wow, bringing the Kyogre now. Bringing both the Weather Setters of uh, their own on the field at the same time, maybe wanting to emphasize on the rain uh, being selected there, as we are going to actually be seeing a screen being set up from the Grim Snarl, uh, followed by a Snarl, very vital Snarl, onto both special attackers on Yosuke's side of the field. It seems like Yosuke's brought four special attackers to this game, so the Snarl's going to be very, very disruptive from this Umbreon. And it's always back to full HP after that Ice Beam, thanks to the leftovers. So, um, yeah, the, the probably light screen as well coming up from Ranzes. Uh, can't quite tell because of the languages, but should be the light screen against the special attackers. And really not going to be doing too much damage for Yosuke's side of the field. Uh, the way that he switched out the Pokemon meant that the, the, drought, the drought happened first and then the Drizzle went up. So the Torkoal really isn't going to be threatening too much damage at all. So may need to switch out uh, if it wants to be able to do some damage. But Kyogre is in st still a reasonable position. It can fire off mm -hmm. uh, some of its spread water attacks, whether that's the water spout or Origin Pulse, to try and take out the Scrim Snarl. Ooh, but the Grim Snarl is going to go for the Taunt. There's no switch outs to any sort of Groudon, whilst Ice Beam is actually uh, coming out from the Kyogre, maybe expecting that Groudon uh, switch in, trying to get uh, the catch on Ramses, but failing to do so as the Yawn once again comes out from the Umbreon, goes into uh, the Kyogre, and we didn't see the Tortoll move there, so that could have potentially been a Yawn from the Tortoll itself, but stopped by Taunt. Yeah, so only Yawn's coming out from Ramses' Umbreon, no Yawn's coming out from the Torkoal, and Ice Beam with the Umbreon once again, really trying to catch any switches, because the Ice Beams are really not doing too much damage to the Umbreons at all, especially with that light screen, especially with the Snarls as well, so uh, more, more missed opportunities just to take out this Grim Snarl. There could have been the Ice Beam on the turn one, and there's been two more turns now that the Grim Snarl's just been on such low HP and hasn't been targeted. Even if the, even if the Torkoal, maybe even in the rain, could take out this, this Grim Snarl if it went on the offensive. Oh, we're going to be switching, seeing the switch out now of the Kyogre, wants to reset its special attack stages. It brings in the Porygon 2 now, which does have Trace, and I think it was able to trace the Prankster ability on the Grimmsnarl, and we know Prankster Porygon 2 can be such a threat. It was met with a Spirit Break uh, down onto it, which is going to be able to bring it down to minus one of its special attack, followed by a Yawn yet again. This is a very stalling uh, game uh, at the minute, as it Eruption is enough, even in the rain, to pick up a K on the Grim Snarl. I'm not sure if the critical hit mattered there, but you never know. It could have. It was in the rain and behind a light screen. And it was at uh, such high HP, so it's going to be doing uh, pretty much the maximum amount of damage it could have done with the eruption. So uh, probably would have still taken out that Grim Snarl regardless, but... Ramses has Yosuke trapped in that Yawn Vortex where you can just keep yawning the same slot. If the Pokemon switches out, the new one that switches yeah. in gets yawned, and then you eventually have to make the choice of which Pokemon is going to go to sleep. Uh, so long as you aren't dealing with the Umbreon, it can still just go for those yawns. So now Thunderous has hit the field, and mm. the Porygon 2 is yawned. It ha if it wants to set up the Trick Room, it will have to go to sleep uh, in order to do that. So it's, it's still in a very awkward position for, for Yosuke, deciding whether he wants to go for that Trick Room or not. But if he doesn't, this Thunder is going to be putting on a lot of offensive pressure, going to be outspeeding all the Pokemon. Uh, in the rain, the Venus Venusaur won't be able to outspeed the Thunderous. You'd have to switch out the mm -hmm. Torkoal and switch it back in for the Venusaur to be able to outspeed the Thunderous. So uh, Ramses has put himself in a really nice position. Quite a passive lead to start off with, with the Grim Snarl and the Umbreon, but now he's set himself up into a really nice position where the Porygon 2 is somewhat pinned. If it wants to Trick Room, it's going to go to sleep, mm -hmm. and now the Thunderous really gets to, to do whatever it wants to do. The Torkoal is not going to threaten it too much. Uh, we know it's taunted, so it can't yawn the Thunderous, and in the rain it's not going to be doing too much damage. 
Oh, are we going to be seeing the first Dynamax of the day and the game, which is going to be coming out from Ramsey's side. It is going to be that thunderous like you're talking about, uh, Jamie, where it's just going to be, uh, do you think it might be even trying to go for Max Knuckles to start getting boosts on itself or just go for that electric terrain? I don't, if you go for the electric terrain, you stop any yawns coming out from the Umbreons, so uh, going for a Max Knuckle would be nice, but an Airstream is the new noise you here from the Thunderous. Dealing very respectable damage, but also uh, not indicative of the Life Orb variant on this Thunderous, because I feel like that stab uh, boost of damage would have done so much more. As the Snarl comes out yet again from this Umbreon, it is just going wild, yawning everything, snarling everything, and just being such a disruptor for Yosuke's side, as we are going to be seeing a heat wave um, from the Torkoal, not being able to do anything at all, maybe hoping to pick up a burn some how on the thunderous but the trick room is now going to be set from that point on too yeah and it did opt to stay in here so it is going to be falling asleep thanks to that yawn on the previous turn yeah you saw how much damage the torkoal was doing so even though you want your torkoal in the trick room uh, it's not going to be doing any damage because of your own drizzle so it's still a very awkward position for yosuke if he can manage to get his kyoga back into the field uh, while he's in the trick room he can be able to target down that thunderous but it's going to be awkward to get that kyoga on the field so Porygon2 tries to move there, and we did see the interaction now that it does have that pr that uh, Prankster ability, thanks to its trace before. Torkoal goes for the Yawn now, into the Thunderous, whilst receiving a Yawn yet again, now from the Umbreon, whilst trying to limit the amount of turns of usefulness from this Thunderous. The Thunderous now actually opts to go for the Max Knuckle into the Porygon2. It isn't able to pick up a KO, but it is able to bring itself up to plus one of its attack, but it will only have one fight final turn to actually try to utilize that damage output before being put to sleep from this Yawn. And not being able to take out the Porygon 2 there mean, means that he won't be able to target down the Venusaur or the Kyogre with that final turn of Max before the Thunderous falls asleep. So uh, the Torque wearing off at the perfect time for the Torque there, being able to yawn before the Kyogre hits the field. So mm -hmm. now now if, if Yosuke just makes it through this turn, he can get the Kyogre on the field while the Thunderous is asleep and it won't be able to threaten it at all, at least for that turn. So actually quite a nice swing of momentum for Yosuke, getting that yawn off into the Thunderous. Oh, and we see Ramses is forced to make the switch out of the Thunderous because he recognizes how useful it is for the Indian for that Venusaur as the Groundon is now going to be switching in, bringing the Drought, so bringing that sunlight onto the field uh, that maybe this sort of try to utilize, but no, it just goes for the Yawn uh, now onto the Umbreon trying to shut it down over time. This support on two looked like it was trying to go for an attacking move there, that Ice Beam, but the Snarl in return is going to be once again re uh, decreasing the damage output of both Porygon 2 and Tortol whilst threatening to land on both Venusaur and Kyogre if there's any switch-ins. Yeah, now we've got both the Porygon 2 and the Torkoal asleep, but also the Umbreon uh, finally being yawned and would have to switch out if it doesn't want to fall asleep. But Groudon is still in quite a nice position here. Uh, the Torkoal is, is definitely going to be asleep this turn, so it won't be able to yawn the Groudon. The Porygon 2 could wake up and go for a nice beam, but it has been snarled, so I'm not going to be doing too much damage to the to the Groudon. So Groudon is in a very nice position here. It can fire off a Precipice Blades if it wants to pick up a knockout on both Pokemon here. Uh, if it has access to Swords Dance, this would be a good opportunity to be able to set that up as it's not going to yeah. be threatened too much, especially because one of the Pokemon is asleep and one may not even wake up this turn. Uh, but it would need to switch out that Umbreon if they want to stop the, the Umbreon from falling asleep thanks to that yawn. Oh, and we are going to be seeing the Torchon now switch out, finally. Might have been a turn too late, perhaps, but who knows? Kyoga, though, does uh, come back onto the field. We'll be getting its Drizzle ability going, which will bring the rain. As Porygon 2 actually switches out as well, so a double switch right now from Yosuke's side, trying to switch up the momentum and grab it for themselves, maybe trying to wait for the turns of Trick Room to end as well. Third Pokemon switching out, Jamie. It's going to be the Umbreon, which does not want to be put to sleep into the thunderous whilst a very free precipice blades comes out deals so much damage being able to bring both of yosuke's pokemon down below the half range mark of the hp 
Yeah, really nice press for Blades there. And knocking both Pokemon under half HP, both Pokemon that would want to go for the Dynamax. So, and now the Dynamax isn't really going to be very effective on Yosuke's side of the field because of the, all the Pokemon taking so much damage on their side of the field. Uh, but they've managed to gain the Kyogre in against the, the, the Groudon, but now the Thunder has hit the field again. Uh, not able to go for the Dynamax, at least, so won't be able mm -hmm. to, to go for the Max Lightnings, but the, the, the HP on the Kyogre has been reduced, so if it's got Water Spout, it's not going to be doing too much damage at all. We'd have to rely on that Ice Beam that we've seen, or all one of its other water moves that it so often carries as well with that water yeah. spout. Uh, so still going to be pressing some good damage here, but Venusaur is going to be switching out here. Revolving door of Pokemon yet again. Venusaur switches out this time for the Porygon 2. Trace comes into effect, and which ability will it be copying? It looks like it's going to be Drought. So it brings the sun. Might not be the best situation for this Kyogre uh, being caught out as we see a Dynamax, Jamie. And it looks like that Kyogre is going to be going for it. Yeah, but you've just set up the trap with your Porygon too, oh. so the damage output of the Kyogre is going to be really reduced with its water attack, so at least for the first time, it will be able to max go to reset the rate, but it could yeah. also go for max Hailstorm, which wouldn't care about that sun at all. A uh, really tough situation, and maybe not going according to Yusuke's plan, as we are going to be seeing, yes, it is indeed the Max Geyser that comes out, it does under speed everything, it goes for the Thunderous, but it's not able to deal the kind of damage output it was meant to do with a rain on the, the with rain on the field, as we're going to be seeing the uh, P-Blades coming out right now, picking up a KO onto the Porygon 2, whilst being able to deal with respectful damage onto the Kyogre, but the Kyogre goes down from the a wild charge on that thunder so not going according to plan for Yusuke's side there. Yeah, not at all. That's that trace really coming back uh, uh, to bite him in, in the ends with the drought copied instead of the defiance. So the damage output of the Max Geyser was really reduced. Maybe if the if the Yosuke would have gone for the Max Hailstorm, that might have been enough on the Thunderous. But based on the dam the damage output, it's got to be holding that assault vest there. So maybe even able to survive even if it went for the Max Hailstorm. But now you've got the Venusaur and the Torkoal in. The, the Drizzle's going to definitely be gone for good this time. We're going to be in the sun for the rest of the game. Uh, but the Torkoal is still asleep. The Venusaur. Is a very low HP. At least it will be able to outspeed all the Pokemon on the field thanks to the Chlorophyll, but uh, if you go for the Sleep Powder into the Thunderous, then that means leaves you open completely for the Press Blades. If you try and knock out the Groudon, the Thunderous is free to attack as well. Ooh, Sleep Powder does go and connect into uh, the Groudon right now. Being able to put it to sleep as the Thunderous does actually try, it uh, goes for Fly actually, wanting to guarantee some good damage onto this Venusaur if it does not have Protect. Whilst the Torkoal is just going to be going ahead and taking yet another turn of sleep. Yeah, so more sleep turns on the field. Uh, the sleep powder able to connect with that Groudon. Uh, so now we're going to have to see who's going to wake up first, that Torkoal or the Groudon. Uh, we're also going to have to see if the Venusaur is carrying Protect. If it's not, the Fly is go going to be able to hit it. If it is carrying Protect, uh, it will be able to protect itself from that Fly. Ooh, as the uh, Groudon goes ahead and tries to take its uh, guaranteed turn of sleep, but this is Frenzy Plant, and the Frenzy Plant picks up the one-hit KO onto that Groudon from the Venusaur, but it is subject to a fly damage uh, from this Thunderous, but we see reveal of Overberry from the Venusaur. Does it survive? It does not survive. And the Torkoal is going to be hoping that it could somehow wake up, but this is looking to still uh, spell trouble for Yosuke's side as it does not wake up at all. Yeah, and then there's still going to be that Umbreon uh, waiting in the back for Ramza. It's going to be able to snarl down this Torkoal, going to be able to set the yawns as well. If it's got Moonlight, it's going to be able to recover itself. Torkoal does not have access to recovery. Uh, so even if the Torkoal was able to wake up and KO this Thunderous, uh, the Umbreon would be able to slowly whittle away at the Torkoal and heal mm -hmm. itself away as well. So uh, yeah, Yasuke knows that, and Ramza is going to take the first game. Well, Rams is going ahead, and uh, it's that kind of game, right? It was a lot of uh, back and forths, essentially, with the switches, and it was a lot of understanding of the board momentum and trying to grab it, essentially, for one another, because we saw, unfortunately for Yosuke there in game uh, one, weren't able to utilize the trace. Like, initially, you thought, wow, pranks the uh, Porygon 2? That is so deadly. Uh, it is such a threat. It's not even a joke. But then... Switching it out, switching it in for Trace on the drought, that hurt. That hurt just to watch and observe, to be honest.
Yeah, yeah. Some of the, the downsides of Trace, it can give you some amazing abilities, but it can also give you some very awkward ones. And Drought on the switching as you're going for Max Geyser is definitely one of them. Uh, so uh, the single weather coming out on top, at least for the first game, uh, we saw some of the awkward interactions of the Drizzle and the Drought, and even the, the yeah. copying of the Drought as well uh, that can happen when you are running those dual weather teams. So uh, we're going to have to have a bit more uh, a bit more management of the weathers from your side mm -hmm. of the field. Uh, if, if the Porygon 2 would have traced the Defiance, it could have been a little bit of a different game, but uh, based on the damage from the Max Geyser, uh, the Thunderous may have been able to hang on. Uh, it would have been pretty close thanks to that Assault Vest. But yeah, yeah, the Grimstar and the Umbreon are putting on so much disruption uh, at the mm -hmm. start. But Light Screen really reducing the damage output. Because Yosuke brought four, four special attackers to that game, you could just set up a Light Screen, you could spam Snarls, and you're, because of the Snarls and the reduced damage output, you were able yeah. to just spam the Yawns as well from the Umbreon. And that always just put Yosuke in such an awkward position. How do you feel about Yosuke going into this right now? Um, because they had the interaction of the dual weather there that didn't actually work out for them, unfortunately. Uh, what do you think is going through their minds right now in trying to bring as a strategy in game too? They've got to have a, a better way of breaking through the Umbreon. They've got that Urshifu there uh, that would be able to hit the Umbreon super effectively and would not be a special attacker, uh, so would be able to mm -hmm. just completely ignore the Snarls and take almost no damage from them as well. Uh, so I would be looking to Urshifu to try and break through this Umbreon if I was Yosuke. But then at the same time, you're threatened really heavily by the Charizard and the Thunderous on Ramses' side of the field that do outspeed and hit the uh, Urshifu super effectively. So it, it may be necessary to deal with the Umbreon, but it's still going to be very awkward to bring to this match. Do you think Urshifu then would be more of a viable uh, choice to actually bring? Well, if, it, if it's carrying the Focus Sash that it so commonly commonly carries, it will be able to survive any of the, the moves that the Charizard of Thunders would want to go for, but it doesn't seem like we're going to be seeing it as a lead here. No, as we are going to be seeing the Porygon 2 and Venusaur as a lead over on Yosuke's side, whilst Grimmsnarl and Thunderous over on Ramsey's side this turn round. So, multiple different interactions there. I'm not sure which ability um, that Porygon 2 actually traced there, unfortunately, because it just uh, missed my eye. Did you catch it at all? Yeah, it did seem like it was the Prankster that it got. Uh, so, we would be able to go for those Prankster moves. Not going to affect the Trick Room, unfortunately. Uh, not enough to, to increase its priority bracket enough. Uh, but would be able to have access to the Prankster Recoverers at this point. And we have seen that there was the Cobra Berry on the Venusaur as well. So, the Thunderous wouldn't be able to threaten down this Venusaur too much. And that would leave it the opportunity to be able to go for a Sleep Powder. As we are going to be seeing the Umbreon now switching in for the Thunderous. Um, of course, the Dark Types being immune to um, uh, Prankster abilities, as we are just going to be seeing the Light Screen being set up from the Grim Snarl. As I think that was an interaction that we actually, uh, Sleep Powder, I think, did come out and try to target that Umbreon, but it did miss, as the Boyd 2 was able to get a Trick Room up and going for itself. Yeah, very risky Sleep Powder in the face of that taunt from the Grim Snarl as well. Uh, but unfortunately, Sleep Powder not the most accurate move and does miss the Umbreon, and now it can start going for those smiles and yawns again. Ooh, here we go. Taunt now, uh, following suit, goes into the Venus or try to stop it from going ahead and getting any future Sleep Powders going as it's going to be doubled up with a yawn. But the Venus is just going to completely ignore it this turn round, uh, kind of reminiscent of game one as the Sludge Bomb goes into the Grimstar. But wait, the Porygon 2 reverses the Trick Room now, wanting the Venus to move first. Yeah, so now it can go for, for a Sleep Powder this time before the Umbreon would be able to move, but if it goes for that Sleep Powder, you're effectively trying to trade a Sleep for a Sleep, because the Venusaur has been yawned now. It would fall asleep at the end of the next turn, but uh, the taunt stopping any of the Sleep Powders as well means that the Venusaur would have to switch out uh, so that it could start going for them again. But then that just leaves the opportunity for the Umbreon now, either just go for the yawn to try and catch a switch in, or just start spamming yeah. those Niles again, uh, reducing the special attack once again. Oh, as we are going to be seeing the Venusaur forced to go for the switch out. It's going to be bringing that Urshifu there in. Okay, so that's not going to be affected by any sort of snarls, oh, no. but it... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it will definitely be affected by that Spirit Break. Super effective from the Grimstar into the Urshifu, being able to bring it down to its Focus Ash, followed up by a Yawn. So, unfortunately, this pressure that the, uh, the Umbreon is exerting is so, so much for Yosuke to even uh, be able to handle at the minute as Ice Beam onto Umbreon virtually does nothing as it's able to recover thanks to its leftovers. Yeah, I was saying how the Charizard and Thunderous was really threatening down this Urshifu, but Grimmsnarl threatens it down even more with that four times super effective fairy move. And yeah, switch it, yeah, Venusaur did have to switch out there if it didn't want to fall asleep, but Urshifu switching in on the Spirit Break means that it's already down to its Focus Sash. If the Umbreon would have gone for a Snarl there, the, Umbre mm -hmm. the Umbreon would have KO'd the Urshifu and then the biggest threat to the Umbreon 
would be gone. But Yosuke really needs to preserve this Urshifu. Now, it needs to be able to land this close combat onto the Umbreon. Oh, as we're doing this the Brimstar actually opting to go for Reflect, so maybe trying to build up um, a general bulk of its team for future turns, as um, the Close Combat is not going to be able to save it from that. Um, uh, from Urshifu, sorry, Close Combat, as it is going to be able to pick up a KO, uh, whilst allowing itself to be subject to being put to sleep or getting KO'd. As we are going to be seeing, it is going to be getting KO'd uh, from this Snarl, obviously because it was at 1 H. Uh, P, uh, on its side, so really tough. I feel like this Umbreon is just honestly really good as a matchup against Yosuke's team, and Yosuke doesn't have a lot of options, unfortunately. Yeah, he's lost his best option by far in that Urshifu. Uh, now being KO'd to that Snarl, opting to target the Grim Snarl with the close combat for the KO instead of getting some good damage onto the Umbreon instead. And yeah. Now the, the biggest the biggest damage output to that Umbreon has gone. At least the the, dress, the taunt has gone from the Grim Snarl. So the Venusaur would be able to go for a Sleep Powder into the Umbreon, but now the Thunderous is coming back onto the fields, and we'll have to see if there is the Kyogre or the Torkoal waiting in the back for Yosuke's side. If there is the Torkoal, it would be able to switch in and get that Chlorophyll going on the Venusaur, mm -hmm. so it could go for a Sleep Powder into the Thunderous before it was able to move. But we have seen that it, had, it did have the Cobra, so it should be able to yeah. survive whatever move the Thunderous would want to go for. But at the same time, the Thunderous could just go for a Max Lightning and stop any Sleep Powders coming out into the Umbreon as well. So it's still incredibly awkward to be able to deal with this Umbreon. Oh, 100%. As the Umbreon is literally not being threatened other than maybe a Sleep Powder at the minute, like you did mention, Jamie, as um, we had to be seeing Ramses go for the Dynamax. Yosuke does have an option to go for the Dynamax as well, but I feel like Dynamax Thunderous, what do you think? Do you think it's just going for the damage of uh, Airstream onto Venu or Nat Max Knuckle? It's not, not threatened at all here. If it wants the pure damage, that would be good Good for the Venusaur as well. But setting up with a Nax Knuckle would also be very good. But it looks like he's going for the Airstream, getting that damage straight away. Okay, so just wanted to go down the uh, pathway of pure damage, which does, to be honest, deal so much, even though that Venusaur is protected by the Cobra Berry there, being able to half that damage output of what it originally would have been. As the Umbreon is just going to go ahead and yawn. It's just been snarling and yawning, and you know what? It's been giving so much momentum to Ramses, but it's finally going to be able to put to sleep uh, to be put to sleep from the sleep out on the Venusaur, successfully landing as the Trick Room is now on the field. So Umbreon has to have a guaranteed turn of sleep. Yes, yeah, so quite nice for, for Yosuke here, being able to set up that Trick Room. Now the Venusaur, even if it goes to sleep at the end of the turn with the Yawn, it does threaten another Sleep Powder into the Thunderous, and if it like, managed to connect that Sleep Powder, then maybe that opens up either the Torkoal or the Kyogre to be able to try and get some kind of Reverse trick Sweep going in the Trick Room, uh, because the Umbrot is asleep here now. It won't be able to Yawn or Snarl, at least, at least for this turn. Uh, so if you can manage to get that, that Torkoal or Kyogre into the Trick Room while the Umbrot is sleeping, it won't be able to take any of those Snarl Drops. Oh, as Porygon 2 is going to be switching out now on Yosuke's side for the Kyogre. So Yosuke may be uh, trying to get their Trick Room Sweeper, essentially, in comparison to the Thunderous on the field to try to go ahead and deal damage as the Sleep Powder does land on the Thunderous. Yosuke really needed that Sleep Powder to connect in order to allow their Kyogre to safely come into the field and then go ahead and deal damage because now the Venusaur has been put to sleep from the previous turn's Yawn. Yeah, so this is the opportunity the Yosuke needs. He's got his Kyogre into the Trick Room. It can't be thrown by the Thunderous uh, before it wakes up, because uh, it is going to be under-speeding it. But the Umbreon, uh, it'll be crucial to see if the Umbreon is going to wake up here. If it does manage to, to wake up, it'll also see, how because of that Airstream boost, whether it outspeeds the Kyogre or not. Uh, being able mm -hmm. to get a Yawn into the into the Kyogre would put a stop to, to his damage output in the next turn. Uh, Snarl would be able to reduce it immediately as well. And you've also got that potential Groudon switch in that could reset the, the weather in the favor of the Groudon to reduce the damage output of the Kyogre. But at this point, the Kyogre is going to just, just be going for a water spout, doing some good damage Oof. to both Pokemon. Very good damage indeed, doing what a Kyogre would be expected to do as um, the Umbreon does go ahead and uh, remain asleep as well as uh, the Thunder, so everything remained asleep other than the Kyogre just dealing free damage onto Ramsay's side right now. Yeah, so doing just over half to the Umbreon, so I, the Kyogre definitely could break through this Umbreon once again, and it did seem to underspeed the, the Umbreon, so the Groudon would have to switch in if 
they'd want to reduce the damage output of that water spout. But then if you do, you're still taking a huge amount of damage on the ground and on the switch in because the Kyogre is still at full HP, so the water spout is going to be doing maximum amounts of damage. And the Venusaur mm -hmm. could be waking up at this point. It's taken at least its guaranteed sleep turn. Uh, so is, uh, all the Pokemon on the field have taken their guaranteed sleep turns, so they could be waking up here. But there is going to be that switch in from the Umbreon into that Groudon. Oh, so Groudon wanting to go ahead, bring its wither, uh, enforce its uh, situation onto the field right now, maybe in comparison to Trick Room Turn still being available, but we're going to be seeing Yosuke go ahead for the Dynamax. Are we expecting the Kyogre Dynamax, Jamie? Uh, it'd be very risky to Dynamax the Sleeping Venusaur that may not be able to wake up this turn, but it is going to be the Kyogre. If you go for the Hailstorm, that storm is certainly going to be enough to kill the Thunderous, and if you go for the Geyser, uh, that will start up the rain again, so the, the drought will disappear and the Kyogre will become a huge threat. Oh, as we are going to be seeing it go for the Max Geyser. So, uh, allowing the Venusaur to actually still be slower than the Thunderous within Trick Room, not being able to pick up a KO onto the Groudon there as well. But more importantly, uh, Kyogre is in its element right now. Ramses no longer has access to their Dynamax since it was used up from the Thunderous. As we are going to be uh, seeing Wild Charge talking about Thunderous, dealing respectable damage onto a Dynamax Kyogre there, but uh, maybe not quite enough for it to hit KO. Yes, the Kyogre's in a really nice position here now. Uh, the Thunderous having that Assault Vest means that if the Kyogre targets down that slot with a Max Geyser, it's picking up a KO, whether that's the Thunderous or the Umbreon that would switch in. And we'll have to see who's faster between the Groudon and the Kyogre as well, uh, to see if the Groudon can get off a of Precipice Blaze before the Kyogre would attack. And also the Venusaur as well could be underspeeding that Groudon because it is in the Drizzle and not the Drought, so uh, no Chlorophyll activated. It's taking quite a few turns of sleep here, so it is getting quite likely to wake up. So we'll have to see uh, the speed interactions here. And the first one is going to be that Kyogre. Wow, Kyogre moving first, going ahead and being able to guarantee the KO onto the Thunderous with that Max Geyser. As uh, we are going to be seeing the Venusaur move immediately after, uh, trying to wake up but not being able to do so as the Precipice Blades comes out picks up the KO onto the Venusaur whilst dealing respectable damage onto the Kyogre as well, Bring it down to Ramses, two last remaining Pokemon on their side of the field. So it's going to be that Umbreon, and it's got rid of the speed uh, increase that it had from the Airstream, but still asleep, so may not be waking up. And the Porygon 2, uh, very healthy coming in for Yosuke's side of the field. And we have seen that uh, the Kyogre did... Oh, uh, it's going to be tracing that, that drought once again, so... Uh, the, the, the Kyogre's damage oh. output is going to be decreased. It'll have to go for a Hailstorm uh, if it wants to, to do some good damage to the... Uh, super effective damage to the Groudon at this point. Uh, but if it does go for that Geyser, it will set up the rain to be able to do good damage to the Umbreon. Because uh, the Pokemon mm -hmm. 2 would eventually be able to beat the Umbreon, uh, but it's going to be a so, very, very slow process. No, not either the Umbreon or Pokemon 2 would be able to break through each other very well. Uh, so if the Kyogre yeah. and the Groudon go down here for, for either player, or for both players, then it's going to be a very sturdy end to the game. Uh, but yeah, the Drought once again would be very awkward for the Kyogre. We'll have to see if it opts for that Geyser. It may still mm -hmm. be enough to KO the Groudon, and then would set up the, the rain for the Umbreon. So uh, we'll have to see, see which which. Uh, option the the Kyogre opts for, and also whether the Umbreon wakes up. If it, uh, it manages to wake sure. up and snarl the Kyogre before uh, it's yep. able to attack the ground, or maybe even able to survive even a hailstorm or a, a, a geyser as well. Oh, definitely. As we're just going to be seeing the ground on move first, nearly pick up the KO thanks to a critical hit. Oh, a double critical hit and a double land. Oh my lord, this ground on is very frustrated. As we're going to be seeing Max Hailstorm move immediately after does guarantee the KO onto the ground on, whilst actually being able to. Set up the hail now, wanting to perhaps uh, chip damage onto the Umbreon over time. But Groudon has gone and been dispatched off in this game too. As Umbreon now goes for Moonlight, so uh, gonna be able to recover a bit of HP there, which might not be the best scenario for Yosuke's side of the field. But um, we're just gonna be seeing Trick Room being set up actually, even though Umbreon moved after Kyogre. Uh, this could come down to the Umbreon versus Porygon 2 endgame. Uh, the hail being set up means that the Moonlight isn't as effective as you would want it to be. And the Kyogre is so low now, it will be KO'd to one more turn of hail. So even if the Kyogre wants to protect and the Porygon 2 reverse the Trick Room again so that the Kyogre can outspeed the Umbreon, it's still going to be just KO'd to the, the own hailstorm that it set up for itself. So if it went for Geyser instead, it would have set up the rain and exactly. would probably still KO'd that Groudon because the Umbreon didn't go for a Snarl. So it would have been able to protect, reverse the Trick Room back so that Kyogre could at least get one more water move into this Umbreon before it went down, but now we're going to get into this very, very slow endgame, it seems. 
<laughs> Definitely slow end game, which it's just such a nail biter because you just know how stressful this must be for both players as Ice Beam does go into the Umbreon um, from the Porygon 2, but Snarl in return comes out, picks up the KO onto Kyogre, which is definitely not a fan of that trick room setup from its partner there, as um, uh, the Porygon 2 will be now brought down to minus one of its special attack, but like you said, Jamie, this is looking to be a very lengthy end. Yeah, the, the Snarls will reduce the, the damage output of the Porygon too, but that doesn't really matter at this point since the Umbreon really won't be doing too much damage to the Porygon 2 either. It has access to foul play as well. That's still not going to do too much damage to uh, to the Porygon 2. So really mm -hmm. it's going to come down to maybe the percentage of HP at the ends because both Pokemon have access to recovery. Uh, Umbreon yeah. has at least less PP on Moonlight than Recover does. So maybe if the Porygon 2, 2 can do enough damage to the Umbreon to stall out the Moonlight, uh, maybe, maybe it will be able to come out on top of the HP there, but uh, yeah, the hail is only going to be on the field for maybe three more turns, and then at that point, the moonlight's going to be doing a lot more recovery. But this, but the recover doesn't care about the weather; it's going to be recovering half HP regardless. Ooh, as we're going to be seeing the recover, like you said, comes out from the Porygon 2, and a Snarl comes out from the Umbreon, now bringing it down to minus 2 of its special attack. So, do you feel like maybe Ice Beam could be a way out on um, this Porygon 2 if it's able to get that very small chance of its secondary effect? You definitely want to be freezing the Umbreon. That would be the way to break through without having to resort to the timer at the end. Yeah. Because the Umbreon doesn't have any way that it would be able to break through uh, this Porygon 2. It could go for a Yawn, but then the Foul Play and the Snarls are just not doing enough damage. The Porygon 2, even if it took all, all of the turns of sleep, it would still be able to just survive easily, get a recover off eventually when it wakes up. Uh, so the Porygon 2 does have a slightly better chance of beating this Umbreon uh, by getting those freezes, but that's still quite an unlikely chance. And it looks like the Umbreon is going to be Ooh. trying to put that Porygon 2 to sleep. We finally see the Yawn coming out. I would have expected it to be in the previous turn, actually, but um, just wanting to maybe try to get that uh, bit of chip damage over onto the Porygon 2, just in case it didn't go for recover. But um, yeah, this is... Uh, unfortunately, this is looking to be a long grind, ladies and gents. Um, but, you know, it's necessary. We're in top 16. Whoever wins this will be the first player today going into top 8 right now. Well, I say whoever wins this. If Ramses does, they definitely will. But if you Yosuke wins this game too, they have the chance to try to bring it back in game three. It's definitely going to be awkward who would have the, the highest H or the highest percentage of HP at the end of the game because uh, uh, you've got the, the Moonlights and the, the Recovers going off and the Ice Beam would probably do more damage to the Umbreon on the final turn uh, than mm. a Foul Play or a Snarl would do. So it's still going to be very awkward uh, going into this end game. We have to factor in your time as well. The players, are, uh, at least one of the players maybe, is taking a lot of time to, to choose yep. their moves. So they may be going for that time time of win condition, but you do have to yep. factor in your, your time into that, into that uh, win condition as well. Oh, 100%. And it's uh, the fact that you've got the timer uh, situation here in game is so, so detrimental to this kind of strategy. As we see the foul play coming out from Umbreon, but not being able to do much at all. But I think Ramses is now uh, going down the venue, of course, of let me try to get as much damage output as I can onto this Porygon 2, recover with my leftovers whilst this Porygon 2 hopefully stays asleep for the next, for full turns of sleep, I think. Yeah, the foul play did more damage than I was expecting, and maybe as much damage as the Ice Beam did, and the Umbreon does have leftovers as well, so even if it takes an Ice Beam on the final turn, it will be able to recover off at least some of the, the damage done, so uh, the, yeah, the, the Umbreon is actually looking quite nice into this end game as well. If there's no freezes, it's definitely going to be quite an interesting end to the game, because it will come down to, if, if both players have to click Recover and Moonlight on the final turn, then we're just going to be at full HP, and then we'll just see who had the highest percentage left anyway, but then if the, if the final move is an offensive move going for foul plays or ice beams it's going to be going to be quite interesting to see the interactions there because that foul play did, did like it's a reasonable amount of chip it's about as yeah. much as the ice beam did before so maybe mm -hmm. the leftovers will come into play into that uh, final final hp percentage yeah, and my thought as well was uh, just going for Snarls 2 could try to reduce damage output as much as possible from this Porygon 2's Ice Beam in order to try to have even more HP uh, over on Umbreon's side. But then you're kind of, I guess, open to critical hits, but it's not as important in this scenario. Yeah, and we just saw the three minutes come up, so we've only got three minutes left of this game. And and something to factor in as well, the fact that the Porygon 2 will be asleep. If the Umbreon can yeah. time it so that the Umbreon will stay asleep on the final turns, it'll be able to get that foul play off into the Porygon 2 and it won't be able yeah. to recover it. So exactly. it's def definitely going to be quite quite an interesting end to this game. The Porygon 2, if it wakes up, doesn't have many opportunities at all to go for any more Ice Beam freezes at this point, which mm -hmm. would be the way to stop the Umbreon from being able to do any damage or recovery. So uh, it looks like it's in the Umbreon's favor 
here at the moment. It, it just needs to be able to time the yawn so that the Porygon 2 stays asleep, at least on the final turn. And if it's in multiple turns at the end game, then uh, on the final turns, it's definitely going to come out on top. Oh, 100%. This is all about management of uh, the situation as best as possible and taking into the fact of, of course, the timings as we see the Porygon 2 stays asleep. So foul play right now has been dealing respectable amounts of overall accumulated damage output as uh, it's going to be coming out once again. Oh, that might be it. That's not even a critical hit, but it deal dealt a lot of damage. But the Porygon 2 wakes up right now. It's going to be able to completely recover uh, nearly all the way up to its uh, full maximum HP range there. But yeah, <laughs> this is coming down to timer. Yeah, that's quite impressive. The Umbreon managed to bring the Porygon 2 under half HP. I wouldn't have expected that in this endgame. I know it did take, like, I think it took the full turns of Yawn as well, but still, the foul plays coming off, being able to do half damage to the Porygon 2 is quite impressive. And yeah. we should be getting out because close to two minutes left here, so there won't be many turns left at all. It seems like the timing of the Yawns might work out in, in Ramses' favor. The Yawn goes off this turn. The Porygon 2 definitely needs to Ice Beam at least this turn, but then it's and going freeze. to be going to, yeah, yeah and, and Freeze as well. Freeze would yeah. be very crucial here to stop the yawn if the yawn goes off i think the umbreon is definitely going to take this game uh, because then you'll still be able to trade an ice beam or a foul play and actually no that the timer is much lower than i expected so Ooh. so there's only going to be one more turn of this game so uh, it's going to come down here so the umbreon went for a yawn and the Porygon too if it went for ice beam that is some damage this turn so it's actually going to be no it went for recover instead so oh. both got players could opt to just uh, wait out the timer uh, there is enough time that if both <laughs> players opted in for a final turn yes. they would be able to do it but if one player chooses to wait that final bit uh, then this that was the final turn of the game so we've either, either got one more turn or that is it and we are going to have to go from full hp percentage left of the, the of your team so it's going to be very close here uh doesn't look like the players are opting in for that final move so it's going to come down to the final percentage hp Buckle up, ladies and gents. This is a nail biter right now. Umbreon does have more base HP than Porygon 2, but oh, this can go either way. In, like the Tor the, the, the Torkod in, come the Eshfu uh, and the Kyogre and all, all the other Pokemon as yeah. well. So it's going to come down to that final percentage HP. So we're going to have to see who the victor is. Oh, and it looks Ramsey. like it is Ramzez. Ramzez was able to take that on percentage HP. So such a close end game there. Oh, coming down Lord. to the coming down to the stall of Umbreon versus Porygon 2, and they both ended up oh. at full HP. So it just it seemed like the, the percentage was just in, in Ramses' favor, and he's able to take the game and advance to the top eight. Huge congratulations to Ramses there, being able to go ahead, like you said, Jamie, and guarantee the spot in the top eight in part two of this weekend event, uh, which is, of course, going to be streamed tomorrow as well. But, oh my lord, what a nail-biter in the very slowest of fashions, because you don't expect, it, it, like, huge full momentum and everything. It was just trying to bide your time and uh, just make sure that you have the most HP as possible because Porygon 2 could have made it but unfortunately it was just I think it was just very tough in that scenario too wasn't it and maybe if it went for an ice beam on that final turn because Yawn was the final yeah. move that Umbreon went for yeah it, it recovered to make maybe like two percent of its HP and it would have been yeah. able to do a reasonable amount of chip to the Umbreon uh, so it's actually quite an in interesting interactions M much more interesting interactions uh, that it comes down to a stall end game uh, when mm -hmm. one Pokemon can't break through the uh, either one there were multiple things in play there was the yawns from the Umbreon on, uh, whether the, how many sweet turns the Porygon 2 was going to take, whether it stayed asleep at the end of the game. Uh, it seemed like a Yawn was, was the final move anyway. And the damage output from the Ice Beams and the Foul Plays, the fact that there could have been a freeze from the Ice Beam, there were loads of factors going into that final uh, final yep. turns of the of the store. But then it just came down to percentage of HP from full HP Pokemon. So... Yeah. So yeah, because even even a crit, even a crit ice beam would have been game winning, wouldn't it? From the crit ice beam would have been would have been game winning for sure. It would yeah. be very close if just regular ice beam because of the leftovers as well. It would have been very close because the Porygon two would have still taken that tiny bit of chip, but Umbreon mm -hmm. would have taken some chip as well. So. So yeah, kind of going to be very close there, and yeah, it just, I, th I think it came down to the weather interactions. Yosuke, uh, the the drought at the, the start, of the trace both times being able to trace the drought, uh, mm -hmm. very bad for him in game one, and then game two, even even the hailstorm there, setting up the hail. Uh, weather wasn't there wasn't an option uh, just as an ability for either Pokemon. The hail being able to knock out the Kyogre itself, uh, at least put it in range where he couldn't protect and reverse trick room to get one more attack off. Uh, was was very awkward so uh, definitely showing how awkward going with multiple weathers can be
Congratulations to Ramses for going ahead and, of course, guaranteeing his spot into tomorrow's uh, event. Huge commiserations and still congratulations to Yosuke for being able to do so, so well. Let's not forget they were the second number two seed going into this event, so they did accumulate quite a very good amount of points there. So congratulations to them as well. But what we're going to do, ladies and gents, we're going to go and cut for a very short break where we're going to be able to go ahead and get our second top six match up which is going to be between Guillermo Castilla versus Michael D'Angelo don't go anywhere and we'll be back in a hot bit 